What up, y'all, YouTube? Flash Speaks. Another video. All right. I've uh, been under the, under the weather last couple of days, so that's why I haven't really been putting out any content. Um, your boy's almost back. Feeling a little better now, so. But I've been reading and I've been hearing and um, listening and observing what's been going on. Because, you know, I got to stay on top of that. <clears throat> All right, so where are we at now? Philadelphia Eagles right now stand at the top of the NFC East at 11 and four. Despite this, it's pretty much rumblings going around about the Philadelphia Eagles being the most miserable 11 and four team in the history of the game. Rumblings about the Eagles being a fraudulent team Rumblings about the Eagles being exposed too simple of an offense, too vanilla of a defense. Rumblings about players being angry with the coach. Players maybe not getting along with each other. Jalen Hurst supposedly doesn't understand why A.J. Brown is so angry. Devontae Smith going at it with Nick Sirianni. Nick Sirianni going back at it with Devontae Smith. A.J. Brown going at it with fans A and fans B and fans A and fans B going back at it with A.J. Brown and so on and so forth. These are the things that have been going on, right? And what do I like to say about it? You know, I like to really say let's move on to the game, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to do something a little different and I'm going to attempt to offer a little bit of insight as to what I think may really be happening. Number one, I don't believe the Philadelphia Eagles team is miserable. I don't think that's the right word. I don't think miserable is the right word. You see, miserable usually comes along with it uh, a sense of hopelessness, right? So that's usually where misery is going to come from. You have in in the world, in the spiritual world, you have what you have, what you call hopeless. You have hope, I'm sorry, and you have fear. You have hope and you have fear. The healthy person, the healthy team, operate between the perfect balance between hope and fear. See, the team is like a, it's like the body of a bird. And the bird has two wings. On one side is hope and fear. You need both wings to fly. A team should have fear that if they don't do what it is that they have to do, that they'll lose. Not only lose the game, but they might lose their spot, might lose their jobs, might be cut, so on and so forth. So while fear is a scary word, and there's a word people don't like, it does serve its purpose in the grand scheme of things. Hope, however, hope is that thing that allows one to go to work comfortably because it's fueled by a belief in oneself, one's teammates, that they can somehow get it done and that at the end of the tunnel, there's a chance to reach the ultimate goal, which is that Lombardi. I cannot be convinced that this team is convinced that it cannot win a Lombardi. Obviously, now the team is upset that they've lost to teams that they feel they can compete with and beat. Of course, they're upset at that. This is a team that has operated at a very high level last season, so much so that they have multiple pro bowlers, all pro t uh, players, NFL top 100 guys. And they went on a Super Bowl run 
where they made it to the Super Bowl and fell short three. Three points to who many believe to be the best coach in the game and who most consider to be the best quarterback in the game. So the team was full of hope after that. Disappointed but full of hope. I got a feeling that what's happening with the Philadelphia Eagles is that they're not miserable. No, no, no. Miserable is hopelessness. I think what's happening is the team is frustrated. Frustration. You know. Because frustration, unlike misery, is born out of hope. that is being marred by um, expectation being not quite fulfilled, okay? This is a team that talks oftentimes about standards. This is a team that talks oftentimes about um, expectations, and belief in itself that it can get to the Super Bowl and win it. This is what you're talking about. So a team like that expects to perform at a certain level. And everyone expects them to. We all know what I'm talking about. So when the team goes out there and they end up with 11 wins, but in those games they feel like they could have been losses here and there due to whatever reason. And then you feel like you're going back to the drawing board and trying to fix those things, and those things repeat themselves. Go back to the drawing board, try to fix those things, and those things repeat themselves. That can lead to frustration. At a certain point in the season, what I think may have happened is certain players on the team may have come to the conclusion that the coaches and the guys responsible for leading the team and putting together the game plans of the team and setting the tone for the team and instilling the systems utilized by the team may not know what they're doing. You see, it's one thing for a coach to make a mistake here and there. It's one thing for a coach to... Um, Lose a game here and there. But it's another thing for a coach or coaching staff to lose the confidence of the players. And I think it happened around the time when Sean Desai, I'm going to talk about him for a second, um, was strengthened with players like Kevin Byard, players like Shaq Leonard coupled with guys like Fletcher Cox, Brandon Graham, and others, veteran guys, even a Darius Slate, veteran guys who may know as much about defense as he may know or who may feel they know more about defense than he may know. Or it can happen because a Shaq Leonard is a four-time All-Pro. Do you guys realize how difficult it is to be a four-time All-Pro at a position? And how rare it is to be four-time All-Pro at a position. All-Pro is not a pro bowler. You may take eight, nine, ten, whatever linebackers might make the Pro Bowl. It's conceivable. But for All-Pro team, it's only you and one other guy. Because you got first team, you got second team. So you're only picking two linebackers. So this means he was either the best or the second best linebacker. Four in the whole league. Four times. Do you think he doesn't believe in his mind that he knows more defense than a guy like Sean Desai, who never played in the game at this level, who basically knows football just because he was hanging around Nick Fangio and Vic Fangio, I'm sorry, and guys like that? You think... That's enough to impress a guy who's a four-time All-Pro. What about a Kevin Byard who's a two-time All-Pro? 
This means twice in his career, it was him and another guy at his position considered the best. Yeah, guy played at a high level. What happens when you go out there and you put in a bad performance against a Washington commander team? And then all the guys on the team want to figure out, okay, how are we going to fix this? And then they go to you and they want to get your input and they observe you and they see that you come out the next week as a defense, win or lose, but you have another bad performance against another team. And they don't see improvement. They don't see adjustments. What happens? You think they still think that this guy knows what he's doing? I don't think so. And then what do you then what happens once a player believes that the coach doesn't know what he's doing? They can get frustrated, right? Then what if the person goes and he offers advice to the coach? You know, I think maybe we should do this, maybe we should do that. Well, try that. Maybe if we try something different. And then what if the coach doesn't take the advice or doesn't change that? What do you think happens? It gets you frustrated, right? Yeah, I think so. What about the head coach in terms of his strategies that he implements? What about that? What about Nick Sirianni and his admitted approach to the game that is coming to the game, try to get a lead. Once you get a lead, especially around 10 to 14 point lead, then on offense, you change your strategy to what? Run the clock down, which sounds good in general. But what if it entails playing off of wide receivers, not blitzing, just trying to prevent touchdowns? And what if it leads to teams being able to dink and dunk down the field, kill the middle of the field all day, score points, and make the game tougher than it needs to be? What if players like a Devontae Smith, for example, says something about this? What if Hassan Reddick says something about this? And then as they go on through the season, they don't see a change. What about what happened in the Seattle game? When the Eagles, talk, when the Eagles got the lead. And then they get the ball. And then they do something stupid like throw an interception. Or in other situations where they do something stupid like run three predictable running plays, or throw a predictable screen pass that gets stopped, which leads to a three and out and a subsequent punt to the other team, and now the team like the Seattle Seahawks comes and wins the game at the end. What do you think that makes the teams feel, the players feel? Frustrated. Yeah, I think so. So I think there's a little bit of that going on. I can't confirm each and every thing, but I can only infer from what little bits and pieces you get from these players. Devontae Smith clearly stated that he's not happy with the way the offense is playing. On a day when I would argue that the Philadelphia Eagles had one of their better offensive outputs. Against the Giants, Jalen Hurst threw for over 300 yards. Both Devontae and A.J. Brown uh, catch north of 70 yards. Okay, uh, DeAndre Swift runs for almost 100 yards. The offense put out almost 500 yards of offense. But he was unhappy. Why? Is it just that with the ability to move the ball or not? Do you think Devontae Smith and Agent Brown believe they can't move the ball? Of course not. Hmm? Maybe it's because... They get the lead in the game. The next thing you know, Tyrod Taylor is able to hit um, Slayton, I believe it was, for that long touchdown, which cuts the lead down to, I think, a two-point lead. I think that made him frustrated. So this is what we got to see. 
whether or not these things can be kinked out or worked out. Now, as for me, I think I'm going to lean on the positive side of things. And it's for one reason and for one reason only. And that's the quarterback of the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, I know I was, now I know, I know I was hard on him on Sunday, even though he played a good game. No, I wasn't hard on him this and I was hard on him last Sunday. The Seattle game, I was truly disappointed in him. But, you know, I decided pretty much that I was going to ride with this quarterback ever since that fateful Sunday in Arizona against the Kansas City Chiefs. And this quarterback went on to put forth one of the greatest performances that I've ever seen a quarterback have. And albeit a losing effort. But what the quarterback did do was put us in position to win the game. And what the defense didn't do was get a stop. I just got this feeling and had this notion and I had this idea that the playoffs are an altogether different animal from the regular season. And I tend to believe that the team that we have, if, if they can fix some defensive things, which I think they can and I'm going to get into it in a second. I think this team is different and, team is, and this team is built for the playoffs. As Landon Dickerson comes back, as um, Jurgens comes back, as Avante Maddox comes back, and eventually Darius Slade comes back, as Matt Patricia gets more settled in. Because I don't care what you say. I've seen some positive developments out of the defense. As Shaq Leonard comes to form. And I see it happening. As, Kev as Kevin Byard comes to form. And I see that happening. What I want to see is Kevin Byard put in more <laughs> positions to make plays. What's happening with him right now, as I see him in a lot of situations where he really can't affect the play, what you don't see is teams picking on him like they'll pick on a blanket ship or Sidney Brown and so on. But as I see these things happen, I think ultimately what's going to be done is the team will ultimately, once again, rally around number one who will cut it loose in the playoffs. Who will cut it loose in the playoffs. So now what, what, what must be done, I think, is uh, these guys just got to put together two positive wins. Two positive wins. Though right now what's happening is, um, you know, we have talking heads saying they believe the Eagles could lose to Tampa Bay at home in the playoffs based off of what they've seen. Why Why do you think that? Why, why do you think that? Um, the Eagles even really, though I will say they haven't faced a juggernaut in the last couple of weeks, the defense has not looked bad. Okay? They just gave up a big play, you know, once. Twice, right? But outside of that, the defense really hasn't looked that bad compared to the way it has looked in previous years. And just looking at the defensive plays called, it's a better defense. It's a better defense. Um, hmm. But number one, slow, steady, focused. You want to get it done. 
was going to get it done. Peace.